this is going to be a novice's guide to scout stamps. So it all began in Mafeking. Scott's catalog is probably the about the most famous kind of the standard catalog so this is the 178 179 and the 180 there are two different baden powell one where it's a smaller bust one where it's a, it's a bit larger and then there's the scout on the bicycle the siege of math began in 1899 it went on for i think it was seven months and at the beginning of the siege baden powell had the military buy all the stamps and his reasoning is that he wanted the troops that were in these they called them forts that's really i've seen some pictures of Maffa King during the siege calling it a fort is a bit of an overstatement they had these little forts around Maffa King, and he wanted the soldiers to be able to write to people in the town so they bought all the stamps they overprinted them, besieged, and you can see two examples here. And there's there's quite a lot of different stamps because it was just the ones that were being used in the town prior to the siege. They just overprinted all of them. And this siege mail had an extra surcharge. Now that surcharge went to actually paying the people who were delivering the mail back and forth from the town to these little forts. And it also paid for the people who were smuggling mail out of the town. So they paid for some of the mail to uh, be run through the enemy line. Lines and and he believed that having this continuous communication would keep morale up. Now in 1900, I think it was about April, the blueprint stamps were produced. So they're printed on laid batoon paper, and I've never heard of that type of paper. I tried to I tried to look up to see if that's like a certain type of plant. I couldn't find anything on that name, so I don't know if that's a mistranslation, but supposedly it's that's what it's printed on and this is actually a type of printing where they took a photo in the process that photo was turned into the stamp it's interesting there's a really good video that i'm going to link in the description that he goes into really good depth on all the mafia king stamps how they were made all the varieties and all of that two of the mafia king stamps featured at the time Colonel Baden-Powell, and then one of them was Cadet Sergeant Major Warner of the Cadet Bicycle Post. He was the leader of the Bicycle Post, and he was also referred to later by Baden-Powell as his first Boy Scout. So in some ways, the Scout on a Bicycle is kind of the first Boy Scouting item. So a really cool little thing, you had the reverse head Baden-Powell, which I didn't even know about until I started researching this video. So on the left over here, you have the, you know, correct facing bust, and then you have the one over here where it's the opposite. There's also, they do exist in sheets, and there were only 12 on a sheet, so they caught the mistake after one sheet. So there's only, I believe, one sheet made, 10 are known in collections, two of them are in the British Royal Museum's collection. Fakes do exist. Here's a link for the fakes. It's a very long page of counting perforations and trying to figure out exactly how the date is on the cancellation and things like that. So you can go through it at your leisure. You can have them authenticated. Here's an example of one that has been authenticated. So this is how not to store your stamps. This is how I store my some of my stamps, not all of them, but this is, this is how I store some of them. Most of these stamps that are the Boy Scout of America, if you just want to collect singles or if you want to collect some of the later things I'm going to show you, if you go to shows, you can get these for less than a dollar. Sometimes you pay a dollar. The sheets are a little bit more, but they, they can be had very inexpensively, and it's a fun way to collect. The pages, these pages actually cost more than the stamps. So you have the 1950 U.S. stamp. This one came out, it was for the 1950 National Jamboree. You can choose, there's so many different ways to collect stamps. I choose to collect, I guess it would be called topically. I like to have a single, a block, which is kind of over here where you have four of them together, and a sheet. I like to have one of each for each of the U.S. stamps. So that's 1950, and then in 1960, yeah, you can collect a single, a block, or sheet. One thing to note is that some people collect where, you know, the different positions of the block where it was separated from the total sheet. So you can see in the, this one you have some of the numbers at the top, and then in, in the second one you have some of the numbers at the bottom. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. Canal Zone Council actually was in Panama, you know, at the canal. And this is an example of an official U.S. stamp 
that was actually issued kind of associated with the council in that area. And then this is from the Ryukyu Islands. So that's in Japan. If you've ever seen the Japanese language handbooks or some of the other Japanese Boy Scouts of America items, you'll notice Boy Scouts of America obviously had a large presence in Japan. There's a military base in Okinawa and the Ryukyu Island stamp, I would say, is one of the, you know, it and the canal zone are a little harder than the 50 and 60, but still, once again, you can get them for a dollar or so. So then you get into the 67 World Jamboree the U.S. hosted. It's kind of interesting. You can get these. It's like almost like a little postcard. Then you can, if you want to collect first day of issue, then you can have the first day of issue cancellation on it. Now, this is also when you start seeing this design printed on the card. There were lots of people who collected stamps back then, just like we collect patches now. And some people had the bright idea of, well, you know, I can go to my local printer or wherever and have these printed up and man, if I put a really cool design on it, people are going to want it. So they had that done and they sold them or they traded them. And I don't go after, for my own collection, all these random, you know, different things that are printed on all these. I just like to have whatever was officially issued. If you go down the rabbit hole, there's dozens and dozens of different printings on the 67 card. So then in 85, we had a weird one in the sense that it was a Boy Scout of America stamp, but it was a part of a larger group. So it was the International Youth Year. You can see that it was part of a block where you had the YMCA, the Big Brothers and Big Sisters. It was four different stamps with one of them being a Boy Scout of America stamp. I really do like the cover which is the 75th anniversary, and that one's the first day of issue. It's just kind of interesting how they come, you know, the Boy Scouts were part of the larger effort. So here's another one. This is really funky. I didn't actually, when I first got this, I didn't know what it was. But in 98, the post office put out this sheet, and that is the sheet. That I know that doesn't look like a normal sheet of stamps, but that is the sheet. And it has that one Boy Scout stamp, Boy Scout slash Girl Scout stamp, there kind of in the middle the page and you can kind of see the perforations where you would take them off of that big piece of paper but so you have the 50 the 60 the canal zone ruku island the 67 world the 85 and the 1998 and then you have a, the 2010 and the 2013 and, and those are going to be all the if you wanted to just do singles that's all you would need to be complete for a single stamp collection. Here's a sheet of the 2010. In 2010, this is where we really get into, at the Jamboree, they started having all this stuff, or at least that's when I noticed it, because I stood in that hour-long line to get this stuff canceled that day. So there was a whole set of different postcards. I didn't feel the need to have 15, 20 different postcards in my collection. I just put two in where I could see one, one of each side. And then there was this really pretty set they did, kind of a commemorative set where they did the 50, the 60, the 85, and the 2010 stamp. In 2013, they went to this stamp, and this is technically categorized as a Girl Scout stamp, but it was sold at the 2013 Jamboree, so I think it kind of goes for both. They did have two commemorative sets and postcards, all available at the Jamboree. Here are the National Jamboree covers. Now, once again, I mentioned earlier that people printed up a lot of different looking designs on the 67 postcard. Well, there were lots and lots of covers printed. People were collecting stamps and trading them and, you know, doing all sorts of stuff with them in the 20s and 30s all. So you will find lots and lots of different covers from each jamboree and there are some that are official and there's some that are somebody just made up and it's kind of hard differentiating between them here are some examples of the ones in my collection the valley forge one on the left is not actually a boy scout one but it was from someone at the boy scout jamboree i thought it was neat and so it's in my collection and that's the fun thing about stamps is that if you like it there you know i don't know that i paid more than a dollar for any of these so once again, if you see it and you like it, you can put it in your collection. They do have some really pretty Order of the Arrow covers. I don't really go after these, but if I see them and I can get them, they're just something fun to collect. So, World Jamborees. If you thought United States stamps were confusing, World Jamborees is like a different game. Outside the United States, it seems that stamp collecting has been a larger activity 
for much longer than it inside the United States. So here's an example of some of the 37 Jamboree stamps on the left, and then you have the 57 Great Britain stamps, and then you have the overprints. I think there's three different sets of overprints from three different protectorates. So in this case, the ones I have on there are the Bahrain. So Bahrain was a protectorate of Great Britain, so when Great Britain made a stamp, they also overprinted it, and it was available for sale there. Kind of neat. Um, personally, I like collecting what was made by the country that hosted the Jamboree. So for 57, it was Great Britain. So anything made by Great Britain, I want that in my collection representing that Jamboree. But just like how people make contingent patches now when they go to the Jamboree, back then there were lots of countries that made contingent stamps. Now I'm calling them contingent stamps. They were really made not specifically for a contingent, but they were celebrating the Jamboree that they were, you know, that another country was hosting and they were sending scouts to. And there are lots of them. If you have a stamp catalog, there are pages and pages and pages for many of these Jamborees, especially from the 50s on. So I don't choose to collect those, but if you want to collect one Jamboree that way, or if you want to collect them all, you can certainly have fun doing that. So then you have local stamps and covers. This one's from Chapel Hill. It's the Dogwood Festival, um, 1935. It was a Region 6 conference. It was kind of the first big state meeting we had in my state. And then here's another one where it was a highway post office of some buses in rural areas. They had a small post office. This one happened to travel from Florence, South Carolina. Carolina to Fayetteville, North Carolina. There's all sorts of local things. SOSSI chapters put out lots of different things and councils sometimes if they put on events. I've seen, I don't think I have a photo of any North Carolina camp that put out a letter that like a custom letter, but I've seen that from other ones or a stamp. So there are camps that have put out stamps that are specific to that camp. There are some camps from North Carolina that put out postcards in the 50s. So, you know, if, if you want to get into stamp collecting, maybe look at something local to you and see if there's anything that was locally produced that would fit into your other collections. It might be a fun way to get into it. This is how you're supposed to store your stamps. They make these very nice pages. I'm not sure where you can buy them now, but I'm sure that they're still available somewhere. And they basically have a spot where you can put the stamp over the image every time you get one. So it, it's kind of neat because it provides a display while also being your needs list. Some, I think what they believe to be accurate background on your first question about the, the paper. Mm -hmm. I think you call it a platoon. The, uh, that's a process that was done before we had uh, machine processes where you could duplicate an image of something it used it was a light transfer type of paper i believe and i'm guessing that's exactly what they were doing with that the video i'm, I, I'm going to put in the description the guy has an hour long presentation on just baden powell stamps he's from the united states i've never heard of him but he knows a lot and so if you have interest in it i watched the video i learned something new every couple minutes i mean i just Wow. I would offer one other piece of information about the Bath King stamps that you didn't mention, and I'm sure there are some others that would, would know this too. Baden Powell is the only non royal family member in of the British Empire to ever have his image on a postage stamp. It seems to be the reason it was so popular is that FDR was uh, promoting it during uh, his presidency and it was something to get your mind off of the war and of course you know one of the most active collectors um publicly in great britain was um churchill he was an avid stamp collector so if there's ever a time to get your mind distracted with little objects putting in a tiny album now's the time and i'll just say i mean think about it what else can you if you wanted to collect just one of all the U.S. singles, you could do that for less than 10 bucks. There's not much you can collect these days that costs less than a dollar in scouting.